Welcome to the Uncle Hack Podcast, where dudes pretty much just talk dude shit. Welcome to episode 84 of the Uncle Hack Podcast. Wow. Thank you. Playoff hockey. Sounded like playoff hockey in the studio today. That's right. Uh, Before we get into that, obviously, you know that I am a hockey fan. I don't care if you like it or not. We're going to talk about the, uh, like, outside of the rink. We don't need to talk about the game. We don't need to talk about the game. There's enough fucking assholes thinking that they're experts at the game, and I've already proved it with pro tips with the dipshit and all those tips that I gave you to be the best beer leaguer, the best minor hockey player uh, there is. The stats don't lie. Right there. MVP, most valuable player, Brendan Black here, 2007 to 2008, Tabor Minor Hockey, Midget Hockey. Okay? Midget might be a little offensive these days, but we don't care because it's on the plaque. I earned it. I'm the champ. Roast Battle Champion, MVP. What else? 2022 finalist and Edmonton's funniest person with a day job, which uh, takes place on Wednesday. But by the time that this podcast is out, you probably uh, will uh, hear the results some way, shape, or form on social media if you follow me anywhere. It's probably already out there. I record these on Tuesday, so that way the early episodes on Patreon, so that way the people that actually want to support me and give me their hard-earned dollars so I can continue to sit on my ass and say obscure, obnoxious bullshit into this microphone and continue down the path that I'm going down. Which is nowhere, it's it's honestly nothing good, you know. Keep doing what you're doing. I hear that every now and then. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, I, I wish I knew what I was doing, you know. I wish I knew what I was doing. But we're on the, we're on the road of destruction right now, gentlemen. Down the path of destruction. Went to Cold Lake on the weekend and uh, phenomenal show. Great crowd, great great turnout on a long weekend for a Saturday night in Cold Lake. You know what? I can't complain. Um, we are we are more than happy with the results of the show. We took it on short notice because that's what we do. We take short notice fights any anytime, anywhere, any place. We'll do some comedy. We don't give a fuck. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was great. The people out there are phenomenal. Um. Now, I was talking with a young guy out there, the group of us were, right? And this young guy says about this other young lady that was uh, across the bar and and uh, I can't remember the, the I, I came in late and this young gentleman says, I gave her the monster fuck of her young life. The monster fuck of her young life. <sighs> wow. You know, I wish... I wish I had the confidence of that young man when I was his age to go around and throw out accusations like that. You know, it's probably that the young bird over there. I think she just turned 18, maybe even 19. I can't remember the age. But let me tell you, <laughs> she's probably only had one dick in her. The monster fuck of her young life, he says. What is it? And when I when I asked him, I was like, "What was it? Just a fucking nightmare for her? Is that why it makes it a monster fuck? Were you so bad that she just wished it was over? Wish she was just dreaming, drunk, passed out, and Freddy Krueger's ripping apart her insides and in some fucking Hollywood cinema bullshit? Is that what that is? A monster fuck? What the hell is a monster fuck in the first place? You little dipshit." You imagine throwing that around? Jesus Christ. I mean, let's be honest, gentlemen. Some of us that listen, some of that listen to this, some of the, most of you that listen to this, we ain't throwing around monster fucks. I ain't throwing around a monster fuck. I'll tell you right now for free that, yeah, the, the only thing monster about my fucking is the nightmare of a fuck uh, 45 seconds that I'm dishing out. You know, I'm not going to sit here and claim that I'm throwing around deep dickens. (sighs) The claim on that young bastard. 
to throw it around in a group of men, too. That's the confidence of a young guy. I like that, though. I like that. You like to see that in the playoffs. You want young, confident men out there shooting their shots, trying to get fucking dicks in deep. And I'm here for it. I'll, I'll hey, you're what you're now in the big leagues. You're not fucking around in high school no more. You're out here with the ladies, not the girls. The ladies will gladly tell you that there was nothing monster about that fuck. You know? Put the bolts back in your neck, neck, Frankenstein, and fuck off into the sunset. You'll get a few of those trying to throw around a monster fuck. Wow. I couldn't believe that. That was the funniest thing I think I've ever heard from a young guy in a serious manner trying to uh, make claims that he's throwing around some massive hog. And that poor girl, <laughs> that poor young girl to uh, have to go through that. Imagine that. I can only imagine what he's like to date. If he's making claims like that, I'm fucking, I'm going to be things. I'm going to be the best rapper to ever leave this town. He had that type of energy to him. I am, I got a mixtape coming out and it's going to put Cold Lake on the map. <laughs> I don't know if he was a rapper or not, but I, I kind of assume so that, uh, that was then followed up by him getting roasted by pretty much all the comedians come in there making a claim like that. Wow. It's a tough go for a young guy, you know? It's a tough go. It's the playoffs, right? We're, we're, we're uh, making short talk, talking about trying to intermingle playoff hockey talk into this monster fuck bullshit. So let's get right into it. You know, we're not going to talk about the game uh, in the, the people involved in it, the players, uh, McDavid, where you don't need to be doing any of that. It, the, the work speaks for itself. I'm talking about the action that's happening off the ice, you know, the off the ice action. Apparently, the Florida Panthers went to a strip club the night before they just got fucking beat out, of, beat out of the playoffs by the Tampa Bay Lightning. And you know what? Respectful. Respectful, you know, sometimes you got to roll the dice on some maneuvers here and bring the pals together. Some of them got caught in a strip club, I believe, in Tampa Bay, Florida. I don't know. I don't got the whole inside deets on the on the whole scenario, but I'm for it. You know, a lot of guys, I hate this sh shit that, you know, these guys are supposed to act like, uh, um, they're the most wholesome men on the planet. I hate that so much. You got all these... Wow, well, what's he... These guys are role models. They're also... Most of them are 24-year-olds, you fucking stun bitch. What would you do? You always get, like, these mothers that are going to have children that go nowhere. That are like, well, what? These, kid, these guys are role models for these kids. And what? They can't let loose? Just because your life sucks doesn't mean theirs has to. Christ, they worked their ass off and made it to the NH fucking chell. And you know what? Little Timmy, little Timmy's going to struggle to make the fucking B team in minor hockey. All right. Hang it up. Oh, these guys are role models. Let them be role models. And don't tell them about all the horse shit that they get up to. Fucking put, strip the iPad out of his hands. Make him watch the highlights. Like we did when we were kids. Do you think that we were on every forum being like, what's the Oilers up to today? No. No. You could barely afford internet in the fucking late 90s, Christ's sakes. Let alone have to read the scandals. And you think a 10-year-old is going to read the fucking newspaper? Are you out of your mind? No. You watched the highlights. Now these kids are living on iPads. They know all the dirt that all these guys get up to on the off season. Let them live, mom. Shut the fuck up. Well, he's sitting in a strip club. Don't you think that so? If you made the NHL, what are you in there for? You want to get some pussy while you're there? Of course you fucking do. The average NHL career lasts about a year and a half. So if I'm up in the bigs for a year and a half, best believe I'm going to make the best out of it. Sorry. Yeah, no. My apologies that I don't care that you're... Your kid that plays field hockey isn't going to look up to me anymore because I wanted to go stare at the holes of a Latina down in Miami. You know? 
drives me nuts. Everybody's got this idea in their head that we're supposed like not we're like I'm talking like I'm in the NHL and I'm sort of some influence on children these days. That'd be fucking wildly embarrassing if I'm a role model to your teenage boy or girl, especially girl. If I'm your role model to your children, if I'm a role model to your children, it's done. It's over. Don't come to me when a scandal comes out. Uncle I got caught doing cocaine. He relapsed after three. Don't come to me. I don't care. Okay? You're supposed to be a role model for these kids. What? That they can start a podcast? That they can literally sit in a chair and talk about fucking nothing? Is that what... That's what you want your kid to be? Okay. I'm real proud of you for setting the bar low for that fucking poor little bastard. Could have been anything in the world. Instead, he makes TikToks. <laughs> that drives me nuts. Let these guys live. They're only young and in the NHL for so fucking long, you know? Those same bitches are over there fucking, yeah, body positivity and letting the whores sell pussy pics. Let the guys go look at the pussy pics live in action. Middle of the playoffs. Oh, I was in the playoffs. Yeah. You made the NHL playoffs. Do you understand how hard it is in there? No, you don't because you're a nobody just like me. So we sit on the sidelines and we look at them and just pray. We just use them as like a form of an ex It's an escape. It's an escape watching the NHL. The NHL playoffs, it's just like, yeah, we did this. We didn't do jack shit, first off. I, I enjoy that. I, hey, the fellas are looking good. That's what we're here for. We want them to win. It gives us a bigger excuse to get hammered on a fucking Tuesday. So we can get absolutely drilled on a Tuesday evening and show up to work the next day, and it's excusable in a weird way. You know, oh, I got fucking hammered at the game. Really? Where did you sit? Where if you're just like, oh boy, got into one last night and I was playing the VLTs and hit fucking sevens on a four spin for a grand. Next thing you know, I'm fucking gunned. 2 p.m., 2 a.m., I'm rolling in. The white 2 p.m. <laughs> kind of job you working? Well, clearly... Clearly a very exciting one. 2 a.m. rolled into the house. Old lady's losing it. Playoff hockey. It'll get you. There comes like some excuses that come around with it, though, and you got to take advantage of it. See, th this is the problem with some of you idiots. You sit there, who gives a shit about the hockey game? Use it to your advantage. Like I just said, you can get fucking gunned watching the game, but you had to go and open your mouth in the shop too much and fucking tell everybody that, oh, Oh, I don't give a shit about the playoffs. I don't give a shit about the play Fuck hockey. Fuck hockey. You had to be Dr. Cool, but instead, now you fucking ruin that for yourselves for when you uh, want to get drilled on a weekday. You know, you want to get absolutely platooned. Seal Team 6 on a bottle of whiskey, and you show up half snap the next morning, and they're like, well, what, what the hell is this all about? Oh, you know, uh, you got no excuse in the back pocket. Uh, I don't know, fuck, uh, just had a few too many drinks. Where if your boss is a major hockey fan, he would understand that, oh, your team won? Pfft, makes total sense to me. But no, you had to be Dr. Cool sitting there may try to make fun of everybody that likes the game, you know? Nobody makes fun of you for liking whatever sports you like or whatever. Hey, I like I like wrenching on my truck. Fucking truck. Sports are gay. Sports are gay. Why won't you want to fix something? Because who wants to work more after work? I get it. Hey, everybody needs a hobby. But I don't look at, at working on vehicles as a good time. I like watching whatever. I'll sit in the shop while everybody works on a vehicle. But now it's the playoffs, daddy. This is where, this is where alcoholics shine, you know, every other day, you just basically sober up just enough to get hammered the next following day. It's beautiful. You want your team to go as deep as possible in the playoffs and the city is electric right now. You want to go out in this city after a fucking hockey game. And I'm talking about Edmonton because that's where I reside. For those that are new to the show, I reside in the city of Edmonton. 
and it is fucking electric. Go out, have a good time. You don't even need to be a hockey fan. Just fucking stop being a miserable prick and get involved with something. Well, nobody gets excited when Chevy drops a new motor. Exactly. What the fuck is exciting about that? Right now, you got a team that is red hot. And the bars are fucking excellent. It is worth every second to go out and soak this in while it lasts. I'm telling you. You better pray. Pray. If, if you're in a city that has an NHL team still in the playoffs, go out and en enjoy a little bit of it. If you're an hour out of that city and there's a, there's a game going on that night, I highly recommend going into that city and just soaking it up. The ladies are out. Everybody's out again. Instead of like sitting on Twitter, listen, the digital fucking shit, the digital arguing can fucking stop for two weeks, okay? I threw a tweet out the other way. Well, what about the, the WEF is taking over the whole world? We ain't stopping it, okay? We ain't stopping it. So you might as well go get out in the streets, hammered, drunkenly disorderly, or drunken disorderly. Is that what I'm looking for? Who knows? I'm on a rant. I'm on a tirade. Let me fucking vent. Let the fucking cannons roar, daddy. That's what you want. Civil disobedience. Is that what you, isn't that what we all want? Right now, it's fucking happening. Everybody's hammered in the streets, running up and down. Woo! Go oil, go. I know it's not uh, everybody can, joining hands in a fucking convoy driving around the city honking air horns right now, but hey, they're at least in a fu there's blockades happening right now in a way because the traffic is backed up trying to leave the game. Join in. Make it about you. Sp paint World Economic Forum on your fucking face and go walk around and say fuck Trudeau and the whole city will be behind you. Go have fun. Unwind. All right? Two years of arguing online. And uh, it's pff, now causing you to just be miserable all the time. Okay. Well, fucking Klaus Schub is trying to take over the whole world. Listen, none of us are rich enough to combat that guy. So just enjoy it while you can. The world's crumbling right in front of your eyes. So, the good times are only going to last for so fucking long, okay? And these are one of those good times. Everybody's fucking, well, yeah, yeah fucking let me tweet about all well, my thoughts about the NHL playoffs. These communist bastards are taking over. Yeah, too bad. Guess what? It's happening. There's nothing you can do about it. Except for get hammered in the streets and screaming and yelling and causing a disruptance to let them know that, hey, all it takes is a playoff game to set these animals off, all right? Nobody wants to go out and honk a horn for the Freedom Convoy. I mean, regardless, I was out there. Pat on my back, right? Pat on my back. Where's my cookie? But not everybody was behind it. A hockey team is something the city can get behind. Imagine a Stanley Cup parade here. Then fucking drag out your fuck Trudeau flags. To bring it all out. Bring it all out. Lay it all on the line. Print off, you know, Agenda 2201, whatever the fuck it is, and hand it out throughout the whole parade. Who gives a shit? No one cares anymore. It's open. It's wide open. People are drunk in public. We're having a good time. We're living, loving laughing. People are fucking again. That's what I like. It's not a lockdown anymore, baby. It's a cock down. Pregnancies. Teen pregnancies are on the rise. That's what we want. We want people out. Monkey pox is around the corner. It's knocking on the door. And right now, all you get is some playoff hockey to bring the people together, to get out in the bars, finger bang a stranger. Get your dick sucked behind a bar, a uh, dumpster, a barbershop, I was going to say, but a dumpster sounds, both sound kind of funny. 
Get your hog slobbed on behind the fucking local barber shop for an evening. Who cares? Your tweets ain't going to do shit. It ain't. I hate to be that guy, especially when you got a follow count of about 198 of the same people that just tweet the same shit, and it's the same 200 people following one another. But instead, you got to be the miserable prick. Oh, well, what about what's happening in Davos? Mm. Right. Because every Joe Schmo can just pack their bags and head over to Davos to cause a little bit of a disruption. Listen, sometimes you just got to lay the chips where they, f- or let the chips fall wherever the fuck they fall. And we ain't doing jack shit about it. We tried. Look what happened. A bunch of people parked their semis downtown. Ottawa caused a little bit of, bit of disruption. But I'll tell you what, you want to fucking, you want to set it off? You want to set it off? Make sure your local team makes the playoffs, daddy. There's tits out. People hammered in the streets, puking on things. It looks like a scene out of Little Nicky when the brothers took over uh, New York. And it was just madness. They're like, we want madness. And it's happening right before our eyes. That's what I like. Oh, yeah. One second here. All right. What do we got here? That's right. Now, at Davos, we're going to figure out a way to make sure that monkeypox is taking out the local homosexuals. That's our next, that's our next little endeavor. While we make sure everybody's poor, broke, dumb, and stupid, we're going to implement a new disease that's going to take out the homosexuals because they're causing a bit of an uproar, right? They're causing a little bit of an uproar inside of our school systems. And I don't think we like that. In the second half, we'll be talking about this video. Uh, Lib's a TikTok. I, I, I'm a huge fan of that page because it's just insanity all the time. Uh, it's completely out of control. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got a retainer. Oh, fuck me. I wish I had a photo of it ready to show you, but old cousin Hoove is having a tough battle of Alberta right now. Like, there's some people out there that are having a rough battle of Alberta. You know, cousin Hoove, Christy FaceTimed me the other day and fuck, his face looked like he got boot fucked. I said, what the hell? He went to game, uh, he went to game two at the Saddle Dome there in Calgary. And his nose is too on sideways. His lips are out to here. Road rash all over his face. I said, Jesus, is it that bad? Holy Christ. I didn't realize the BOA was bringing out all the violence towards each and one of every single one of us. And he goes, no, man, I fell off, I get off the party bus. I couldn't stop laughing. It reminded me of Slapshot. You remember when they had Dave Killer Carlson up in the press box? And uh, fucking Jim Carr looks at him and he goes, uh, hey, you injured yourself in the Peterborough game. And he goes, no, I got a cold. <laughs> I got a cold. A what? Yeah, no, I went out to start my car in that last storm and I, I got a cold. I think it settled down in my kidneys. And he's, All right. <laughs> just pathetic. Not in that sense, but, you know, just a complete curveball. I hear it look like he got boot fucked by at least four guys. His face is bangled. It's having a tough go. Hear him lost his footing, get off the, the party bus. After a few Colorado Kool-Aids, as they say. And, uh, yeah, he he hasn't really explained it that well, but he said he took it into one of those concrete barriers. And his face just bop right into the fucking thing. And he took a, took quite, quite the spill. So, 
so he's having a rough go. Playoffs are eating us up. I'm seeing I'm seeing people. I, me and the old lady decided to drive downtown Edmonton to go and check it all out and soak it all in. And it's madness down there. I've talked about it already. I'll get over that. But we're seeing just people hammered Sunday night on a long weekend up here in Canada. What do you do? You head downtown, daddy, and you let the cannons roar. You're having a good time. You're screaming at people about the World Economic Forum as it's 3 nothing Edmonton. And you got about nine seltzers in you. Now this is the time that you want to bring up some conspiracy theories, start yelling at them, and all of a sudden the goal song's going off and you got to get in that, and then we'll return back to the conversation. Listen, I follow this account on Twitter. Take a look at my Twitter account. Try to convince people that the higher powers that be don't want us out here, and that's why you're out here. The ladies are walking around, no bras on, nips on hard because the game was that good. The cannons are out. Tits are out. Summertime's around the corner. Monkey pox is knocking on the door. You got a two-month window to enjoy your life. Get out there and have a goddamn good time. They got the watch party outside of Rogers, and that looks electric. I'm telling you, I wanna, I'm heading to game four tonight. That's right, Tuesday, daddy's in the crowd. And then the following day, we got the championship for myself with Edmonton, Edmonton's funniest person with a day job. So it should get interesting this week, you know? I got to have full-blown restraint. You know, I got a big game seven tomorrow, Stanley Cup final, and uh, the good Lord is testing my will on going down to Rogers Arena with a few Tabor gents, Tabor legends. Uncle Rico is making a, an appearance up here, and we're going to go have ourselves a good time down at the hockey game. And the good Lord is going to test my will early in this game. If they start popping off, I'll tell you. If they start popping off early in this game, then he is really going to test my will on whether or not Uncle Hack has full restraint with the fellas on fire. This episode may not be fun for you, but it is fun for me just to see the madness in the city. I'm telling you, man, I, I love it. I love this type of behavior within human beings. I love it when people just take a step back, take a deep, hard look in the mirror, and start to enjoy themselves. You've had two years of fucking beating over the head. Rules, rules, rules. Now it's all restricted back for the time being. And I'm telling you, man, whether or not you like hockey and you are in a Canadian city that has a team in the playoffs right now or even an American city, I don't know where the fuck you're listening, but I'm telling you right now, it is worth going out and seeing people smile, have a good time, releasing all that frustration in like a positive manner. And I don't want to see people just beating the shit out of one another because of opposite jerseys. I know it's going to happen. I seen one guy, he looked mortified walking down the street, him and his girlfriend. And uh, they're getting chirped. Of course, you're going to get chirped after they lose. You got to be prepared for that. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Words can hurt me. Fuck off. You can take some chirps. You got to be playful with it. You just got to be smart with it. Don't engage in some fun. Uh, fuck you. Fuck you. Don't fight anger with some playful. Hey, Goudreau sucks dick and hunky. There's going to be just mindless dumb chirps being thrown at you if you're wearing a Flames jersey downtown Edmonton. It's just going to how it. That's just how it's going to play out. It's going to play out. We can yap one another. Let's get back to those days where words don't hurt and we can chirp the hell out of one another. And have a little fun. Have a little fun. And, it, and maybe it's at somebody else's expense. That's just going to be how it is until this series is over. And we can go back to fucking just hating one another in each city. Oh, Edmonton. Calgary sucks. Calgary's gay. Edmonton's gay. No, they're gay. Ride it out. Enjoy it, folks. Enjoy it. Time for a little ad read. DangerCatShop.com. Use the code PODCAST69. Get 15% off your order today. Get a little deal on merch. We got the Killing Beer shirt. Uh, uh, we got hats, hoodies. Flags are now restocked, ladies and gents. The flags are in stock. The flags are in stock. So we have those for you. 
Uh, visit the website DangerCatShop.com for all your Danger Cats uh, merchandise. Patreon.com slash DangerCats69 for extra episodes of this podcast and exclusive content that we film on the road. We are currently... Uh, actually, no, never mind. We just released the Roast Battles Volume 5 where I battled for the championship for, against Alicia Snyder, and I took the belt home. So if you would, uh, want to view that exclusive content, please head on over to patreon.com slash DangerCat69. All Roast Battles are filmed, put on there. Exclusive contests or er, con- content is on that platform. So please uh, head on over. It's a great way to support the show. And you get an extra episode of this podcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. How exciting is that, lads? Anyways, back to the episode. All right. So I found this video that I want to play on here. I think it's hilarious. Like I was talking about libs of TikTok earlier. Uh, so this is their Instagram page. It is libs of TikTok official. Um, this account basically finds all the woke progressives of the world that are just mildly insane. All of them are insane. And, uh, all these crazy ideologies that they drum up inside their head and put on TikTok. Then this account takes it and it just, all it does is share it. And it's hilarious, man. It's hilarious. This one I'm going to play for you today. Uh, let's pause this. Um, is fucking insane is what it is. Uh, here we go. We got it. Bam. Oops. No. So this gentleman, for those listening, is a blue-haired... Oh, sorry. Purple has a septum piercing, a bunch of piercings. Nails are done. uh, And he is... The caption on it is fundraising for my son's transition. So we're going to listen into this. And some of you uh, that are driving in your pickups are probably looking at a power pole right now and wondering, shall I ride out this conversation or should I just put the fucking front end of my Chevy bow tie into a light standard and not have to listen to any one of these idiots rain their ideas upon me. Um, and, and to that, I may suggest that the, the light standard might be a good idea. I, it's uh, totally up to you at the end of the day. Um, it's a minute 37. So buckle up. It's hilarious to me. I'm going to laugh at this a few times. Uh, don't mind me. I'll probably mix in some commentary here and there. Oops. Uh, and, and, uh, we'll just see how this all goes. Okay. We're just gonna, we're going to be in this together. We're going to join hands and listen to the, the ramblings of a complete insane dipshit. And, and I, I say that respectfully as an insane dipshit, uh, myself, but, uh, his TikTok handle is chaos cryptide. So this, this should Cryptid, chaos, cryptid, cryptide, cryptid, cryptid. All right. Anyways, I'll shut the fuck up and uh, soak this in. Those of you don't know, my name is Lyric. Um, Lyric. Today, making a video that isn't like the other content that I typically make. Um, basically, I'm raising money to help fund my son's transition. <laughs> I'm sharing this with his permission. Um, oh. Basically. We already have a diagnosis of gender dysphoria for him. Um, we have gotten his blood work done and we need to start him on puberty blockers. This is insanity. This is insanity. Because it's difficult. Like, as a child, right, you usually look at adults that that, that give you advice as a, like a role model. See, now, which... You as a parent, I want you to take this into consideration. What do you want as a role model for your child? Do you want this? Someone who wants to put puberty blockers in your in, in into his son's fucking bloodstream? They went and got like, like gender dysphoria, just what whatever the fuck. Or do you want 
maybe a uh, third line right winger with the Florida Panthers uh, sitting in a strip club throwing money at pussy holes. One's encouraging puberty to peak. Ref, look at hole. Look at that hole. Yeah. Here's a dollar. Here's ten dollars. And then this asshole wants to block that. Everything that's enjoyable about being a man, you know, when you get that test rush, you know, when you were in, you remember when you were a teenager and you got that test rush and you just like, remember, I remember the first time you seen a nipple poke through a shirt. Jesus Christ, it was like the 4th of July in your mind. There's things crossed and you're like, why do I like that a lot? You're just looking and it was just like, it, it wasn't even a fully developed titty. It wasn't even close to a fully developed titty, but it just so happened to be a slightly cold day where the AC's pumping a little early in the classroom. And you, as a 15-year-old, are starting to get these changes. You're getting hair on your nuts. You're like, you're getting growing pains. It's like watching, uh, you know, you know, in those uh, cartoons when the werewolf starts ch ch changing. <laughs> And this asshole wants to block that. That was the best thing about a teenager is trying to figure that shit out. You're just like looking at tits. You're just like stoked about tits. You just, you, you found why you like tits and you're just like, mm. still no reason why you like tits, but you look at them and you're fucking like, you get excited, dude. Even as 31 year old, I, if somebody dumps their hammers out, I'm like, fuck yeah, I like, I like this a lot. I'll look at them. I was standing outside, this totally tailing off of what this, but I'm standing outside of an open mic the other day, and this drunk lady walks by, and she's just hammering, hey, danger cat guy, ah. And all of a sudden, she's like, I love showing my tits. And she was a lesbian, hammered with her girlfriend, dumps out the hammers. And I'm like, oh, what a day. You know, what a day. This is a good day. Whether you, whether you think the titties are great or not, it don't matter. Tits are tits. That's the attitude you got to go into this with, right? You got, at the end of the day, you got to look at titties. It's just like, man, these things are beautiful. They give us life. They give you life, daddy. Then you got this, this fucking asshole. Poor kid. That's tough go. That's a tough, in all seriousness, that's a tough go as a, as a kid that this is what you have to look up to is some fucking jackass that buys into all this bullshit, you know, wants his kid to become trans and hasn't even had an opportunity to, to be a kid. That's fucked to me. You know, go let the kid make his mistakes. And then when he hits 18, 19, if this is what he's into, this is what he's into. But you got, we went and got his t uh, tested. We got his blood work done and he has gender dysmorphia. Are you, is it him or you, you psychopath? Jesus Christ. This has got to be like criminal in a way. Having a kid, just let a kid be kid. Everybody wants to use the fucking kids as like a way to champion whatever they have in their back pocket, you know? Like just, it's like when you watch some poor bastard, even political, like when it comes to politics, even when you, you got kids that are saying like, fuck, fuck Trudeau, let the kids just go fist fight in parking lots and, smoke weed, try and finger bang whatever pussy they, you know, uh, I, maybe I need to come. Jesus Christ. What's wrong with me today? I'm just fucking, I'm revved up for the playoffs. I seen, I'm seeing titties in public. Oh, fucking it's summertime, daddy. It's fucking summertime, brother. The girls are, dry, the legs are out. You're seeing legs and maybe I need to go. I, I should have jerked off before this podcast. I'm just being like, everybody's going to go out finger banging. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Jesus Christ. Then I got to look at this mutant on the screen here talking about fucking making his, trying to talk his kid off, uh, like off the ledge, not even like jump off, cut your dick off. The greatest thing that you could be born with, you know, does it come with perks? A hundred percent. It doesn't bleed. Jesus. As soon as possible. Now, I personally, I didn't, I transitioned later, so I wasn't familiar with how puberty blockers worked. Um, basically, my insurance- Whoa, 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 basically. What the hell was that? 
What the hell was that? Basically. Familiar with how puberty blockers worked. Um, basically. I wasn't familiar with how puberty, puberty blockers worked. Um, basically. Yeah, but we're going to put my fucking son through this mutant torture. So what is this then? Is this like a dude transition to a, transitioning to a woman? There's a full-blown beard here. A gap between his teeth bigger than pff, Rosie O'Donnell's fucking hole. You can look in the eyes of some human beings and just see like there is something not there. You know? I imagine you look in my eyes and you just like, yeah, there's a screw loose there. But then you look at this and they're like the whole motherboard was removed. This is just an orb of fucking flesh. They're always fat too. They're always fat. Why is it? Why are these people always fat? Get a hobby. Go exercise. Get your mind right. You sit in the fucking couch in the dark. You don't get sunlight. This person looks a little tanned, but I don't know if that comes with the blockers. Does that come with the blockers? I don't know. Mutant. Is that a mean thing to say? I don't know. Who cares? I think it's just fucked what you're doing to a kid, though. You know, if there's like a feminine kid, I I, I got gay cousins, and they were like feminine as a kid, and you just let them be whatever they're being, you know? And we bothered them. He wanted to play dress up with Barbies and put put high heels on. And like we didn't see that coming, you know? Which, whatever. That was his thing. Let him do his thing. Some kids like playing soccer. Let the kid play soccer. But instead, let's put you through some life-changing surgery and these almost tests on this kid to go and get blood work done. You went to the extent of getting blood work. Let the fucking kid be a kid. What the hell is happening out there? God almighty, I'm thank God that I don't have a child. I couldn't imagine them coming home and be like, Dad, did you know that there's 89 genders? Oh, fuck, I thought there was only 72. No, you fucking bigot. All right. Put the boxing gloves on. We're going to the shed. My insurance doesn't cover this. Weird. Which is wonderful, right? Um, <laughs> Which is wonderful, right? Yes. Yeah, it is absolutely phenomenal. I... Why wouldn't they want to, you know, why wouldn't a Mormon insurance company want to cover this? You know, I'm sure the Mormons are just uh, jumping up and down with joy. You know, because 90% of the insurance companies are owned by Mormons. Yeah, because, oh God, it gives you a headache almost sometimes listening to this. Anyways. The generic version of Lupron that we have a 22 and a half milligram dose that is going to cost out of pocket $468 per shot. And each shot lasts three months. So we need four of these a year. Um, it's what, close to $2,000. <laughs> Two grand a year. Well, it looks like it looks like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is this a guy or girl? I don't know what it is. It looks like mommy has to get a second job <laughs> to pay for the transition of the child. Jesus Christ. Why won't somebody pay for my kid to transition? That's even more pathetic. My God. That's even more pathetic than uh, just being like, I'm, go I'm about to transition my child but I need it on the dime of others because my insurance won't cover it what an asshole <laughs> what a fucking asshole goes on TikTok bagging for fucking strangers to give him money this twisted part is is like somehow people will feel good about giving money to this like transitioning a kid and and I say kid I'm really want to emphasize on child a child so if they haven't hit puberty, that tells me that they're probably under 13. 
And these are like very influential years on your mind, you know, being surrounded by people that, that, that give you the information and, that you store inside your stupid little brain. And you, the people you look up to have a major influence on you. And I'm, and I'm not, I don't have anything against trans people. Okay. If you want to do that when you're of age and you want to, and it cost comes out of your fucking pocket, by all means, do whatever you got to do. Because, like, it's your life. At the end of the day, it's your life. But I don't think it's very necessary to sit here and, like, encourage a child who's easily influenced. Because, let's be honest, if if I sat around as kid, too, and I was being like, I love hockey, or blah, 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 or there was some interest overlay, he might start looking at me, that's right, me, as a role model, and then this would ruin the whole plan. Oh, I wanted a daughter, not a son. There's like this weird connect, uh, d connection too that comes with like uh, the celebration of it all. They're always looking for like something to be celebrated rather than just letting people figure it out themselves. I don't know what the fuck it is. There's like a weird... <sighs> Any any time there's like a lull, it seems like there's nothing to be chased. You know, like there's no there's no goals, and it's just like, what's the easiest way that I can be celebrated in a group of people? And then once that's over and done with, it's like, okay, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. You know, it starts. I'm gay, and then everybody's like, mm, it's already been done. I'm a trans male gender fluid anime character who attends furry conventions four times a year. They're like, wow. <sighs> what a, what a brave soldier. Um, I have already exhausted most of my funds. I need help. I want to raise money to help cover his transition related costs as, um, it's very difficult to come out with that sort of money on short notice. Um, I know that I'm asking a lot, but I would do anything to make sure that he is able to continue his transition seamlessly. So that's so twisted. I feel so bad for this kid. You know, are we? Let's see if we can get on. Uh, what was this? Let's see if this, uh, let's do a little digging. What was it? Chaos Cryptid? Chaos Cryptid. TikTok. Chaos. Cryptid. Let's see if, uh. <laughs> Why can't I find this? No. What do you remove his okay, uh, 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 uh. Sorry, this is a uh, bad ra radio. Oh, dude, hell yeah. This account is private. <laughs> Oh my god. Wow. Of course. Okay, never mind. I guess we don't get to uh, take a little look inside the life of what's happening with this gentleman. And uh, trans queer dad is raising... Oh, okay, trans queer dad is raising funds to put his young child on puberty blockers. See, like, I'm all for as when you get older and you can make your own decisions and your own mistakes. Because uh, I kind of, using, uh, I, 
when I was a young man, okay, when I was a young man, I had dreams and aspirations of becoming things that I never was going to be capable of doing, right? I wanted to be an MMA fighter. I went and became an MMA fighter. I had dreams of possibly making the UFC. Was I that good? No. But I had to go and take on these little small goals in my head to understand that those dreams may not be obtainable because I am not that great at fighting, okay? Was I good enough to fight in the regional circuit? Possibly. Possibly, okay? Did I go anywhere with it? No, I did not. In fact, I didn't even fight outside of Alberta, okay? And I had to learn that the hard way. I had to go get my ass kicked, you know. And if you want to put that in terms of the real world, sometimes the real world gobbles you up, spits you out, and reminds you that you're just a mediocre fuckface like the rest of us. So, I'm all for kids going out and making mistakes and attempting, you know, whatever they have in their head, you know. Whatever you have drumming up inside your dumb little skull and you want to go out there with uh, dreams and aspirations before the world gobbles you up and spits you out, by all means, attempt it. But you, you're you going to have some obstacles to overcome. And uh, you know what? There was, it, life becomes hard enough, let alone your parents fucking you up mentally. You know? I'd, uh, you know... I, I wasn't in, the, I wouldn't say the most positive household, but there wasn't just like, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. You got it inside you. You had to do that inside your own head. And I couldn't imagine my mom being like, listen, I wanted a little girl. So we're going to start pumping you fu uh, full of estrogen and put some puberty blockers in you. So that way you can be an underdeveloped pussy once you hit 18. And I'm sure bullying won't be a factor at all. I'm sure that won't be, uh, you know, the natural chemicals that flow through your body as a young soul won't be affected at all. And I'm sure you'll come out of this mentally A-OK. -okay. I'm perfectly fucking fine saying that, you know. Jesus Christ, what's wrong with these people? I couldn't imagine. I'm trying to like see this through the kids uh, view because it's difficult. You know, when, like when I was a young buck, usually as a young boy, you look at your dad as uh, probably the biggest influence on in your life, you know. And I don't know what kids uh, look for these days in terms of like, oh, who's a positive role model and who isn't. But it seems, uh, it, well, in my day, you know, you always had like athletes, wrestlers, musicians, uh, people that that were capable of doing extraordinary things, right? And I guess in a way that this is very extraordinary, okay? The old man is a trans queer dad. Very extraordinary on this uh, global stage these days. I mean, the guy's uh, making waves on social media with a whopping following of 13.4 thousand people. So I'm sure that having that in the back pocket to believe that you're an influencer of some sort and using TikTok to, you know, it's almost like a fucking hedge fund to make sure that you can lob off the knob of, of your firstborn child. That, uh, wow. I don't even know what to think about that at times, you know, that poor kid, <laughs> that poor kid. I imagine he's going to be A-OK -okay and the world, uh, the world is just going to accept him for who he, uh, who his father has made him become. <laughs> and I don't even know if by calling this man a father is the correct terminology and am I going to be canceled down the road because if I put this podcast out and I'm being an asshole talking about it. I don't know. I don't really care to learn anything about that type of shit. But when I do see it, it seems like children right now are like what everybody's focused on. They just want to fucking manipulate the minds of kids. And it's from both the left and the right. It is. And nobody just wants to leave these poor little fuckers alone 
and quit implanting all this. Like you got teachers that are, I, I'm celebrated by my kindergarten class of being non-binary. You could tell those fucking kids you're big bird and they would be stoked. They'll believe anything you want to tell them. I seen a Tyrannosaurus Rex on the highway yesterday. You're not going to believe it. No way. So if you're one of these, like I seen that the other day and I was just pissing myself laughing. Could you imagine that your validation comes from a goddamn four-year-old who just pissed his pants? Wow. Zezer, I can't believe that you have the courage to do something so brave and not pick a gender. Holy shit. That is incredibly brave. I can't believe that you went out there and didn't pick a gender. Get this guy a purple heart. They're going to change the purple hearts to rainbow hearts. And every time you switch genders, maybe like me, maybe they need mood rings. And I'm feeling a little, hmm, I'm feeling a little bit dangerous today. So it turns cheetah print and has a DC 6 9. You know, I'm a dangerous little kitty cat. I don't know what to tell you, folks. I don't know what to tell you. The world is coming to a crashing halt. And we're all just to sit back, relax, enjoy it, see what's happening. Let the let the fine people of this planet figure out whether or not they want to choose the gender of your child. <sighs> wow. And I know, like, maybe I'm not the guy that should be speaking upon any of this because uh, clearly I don't really look into it that much. But I seen that video and it just, like, irritated me right off the top to think, like, you fucking dickhead. You dickhead. To just, like, convince a kid into, like, this is, like, you want to talk about grooming. Everybody, we're on this grooming kick right now. And that seems to be what it is. It's like you're convincing children that this is a good idea. This is an excellent idea. Never mind picking up a baseball and or a hockey stick or, or even, Jesus Christ, even a wrench or a tool or some sort. And going out and I'm using boys as as because they're better, right? We've been over this. The number one gender. We're undefeated and everything. There's nobody coming close to us. They even tried like, look, we transition and we take over female sports. We're taking over women of the year. We have it all. We are the best gender. We will always be the best gender. So I don't know why this asshole right here wants to take this guy and put him in a deficit. Why you were born with greatness. You were born with absolute greatness instilled in your tiny little dick that is going to grow maybe big or might just stay small. I don't know. That's for uh, whatever the hell you believe in to decide. You know, maybe you're an atheist. Maybe you're not. Maybe you believe that Allah has all greatness and all power. I don't know. Don't care. Okay. But all we know is that science, when your dad's jizz swam up and plucked his little head and your mom's egg. And it decided at that moment that this is going to be a boy or a girl. And it decided that this one's coming out male. And you were, you, you asshole, this prick that I just had on this TV screen decided that at that moment in time, this is a great way of let's, let's make this guy start off with a deficit. This poor little soldier born with greatness could have been the next fucking Jackie Robinson for all we know could have been the next Muhammad Ali could have been Wayne Gretzky Connor McDavid but nope now he's got to go be the Haley Wickenheiser of fucking female hockey making $13,000 a year to play professional women's hockey but nope not anymore could have been getting 3.2 million Leading, uh, leading the charge on a Stanley Cup drive. And that's not to include the fucking endorsements, the, the, the ladies, the parties, pussy, all of it. Nope. Old dickhead dad over here decided that this was a great opportunity to lob off the hog of my firstborn son and strip him of all that greatness that could have been instilled in that tiny little frame. That is about to hit puberty. But no, old old trans dad 
Well, Trans Dad AM had to go ahead and make a decision for the little bastard. God damn it. Jesus Christ. Pour one out for a dead soldier. Jesus Christ almighty. What are we going to do, gentlemen? What are we going to do? You imagine the army in about four years? Christ almighty. It is going to get spicy. Anyways. It's another episode of the Uncle Hack Podcast. Tour dates coming up. We're going to be releasing Saskatchewan dates, so stay tuned. Specifically for Regina, Saskatchewan. Those two are on the upcoming docket for the gents to come on, uh, rip the mics of there and say evil, disgusting things into microphones of audiences that believe uh, in free speech. And uh, we're going to keep chugging ahead. And uh, whether you like it or not, we're going to say the things that we say, hopefully land us in prison because that's a good fucking credit. Can you imagine that? Jokes that land you in prison. Whoa! That would be phenomenal. So, yes, we will be heading out to Saskatchewan here in the near future. Be sure to check out DangerCatShop.com for uh, upcoming dates. Uh, right now, we're in the midst of um, of uh, booking another danger room because, you know, playoff hockey is definitely more impo- uh, important in this province, and I've uh, aired that out once um, already. I will say, if you are in the Calgary area for the next danger room, I highly recommend coming out. There might, there might be a little treat There might be a little treat. And I'm not going to say jack shit. I'm going to say a fucking word. Because you got to be there to see it. There's there's a good possibility the next danger room might be the best one yet. And I highly recommend coming on out, supporting live comedy. Because shit's going to get wild. I can already feel it. We go up to Cold Lake and the young kids are like, why would you bring these racists up here? The young kids, out of all of the fucking people, the racists. (laughs) How the hell did they know I'm racist? (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm going to bend the knee to some fucking pussy 18-year-old. Kiss my white ass. How about that? Bend over, suck my hole. Bunch of high schoolers. Haven't even had, haven't even been fucked by life yet. Unless you're the, the son of a trans queer dad, then life is fucking you hard. But anyways, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Uncle Act Podcast. And we'll see you next week, Thursday at 3 p.m. Or if you're on Patreon, you get this episode 48 hours earlier than everybody else. So tune in uh, whenever, wherever, patreon.com slash dangercat69 to get this episode that you're listening to earlier than everybody else. And we will see you next week. Good night.